Welcome to the Clear to Send podcast, a podcast about wireless engineering, where we educate you on Wi-Fi technology, talk about design tips, troubleshooting, interviews, and the tools. Here are your hosts, Roel and Francois. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash clear to send and browse the fantastic selection of audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Again, go to audibletrial.com slash clear to send. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us in a brand new episode. My name is Roel Dionisio, and I'm actually going to be doing this week's episode solo. And in this episode, I'm going to go over the demo that Aruba Networks did during Mobility Field Day 3. Now, if you didn't catch this, this is one of the demos that they did perform. This was on OWE, or Opportunistic Wireless Encryption. This is one of the security enhancements that I'm actually very excited about because it targets insecure Wi-Fi networks. And so insecure either done stupidly because people like to use open SSIDs for their corporate networks, or this is just done because it's for your guests. It's your guest network, or it's a, a network that's being used at a cafe, for example, or at the airport. Essentially, it's done for public users, right? It's easy to deploy. You just state, configure an SSID. There's no password. There's no 802.1x, nothing complicated. But that does mean the, the Wi-Fi traffic is unencrypted, and there's no way for that traffic to be encrypted to be uh, uh, transmitted securely unless you're using something like a VPN and all your traffic is tunneled through that that VPN connection. Now we should be security first, which is why I think this is gonna be a step forward for security and Wi-Fi networks. Okay, so we're talking about opportunistic wireless encryption. Unfortunately, it is not part of the WPA3 uh, announcement or certification, they did mention this back in January 2018, the Wi-Fi Alliance, that it, it looked like it was going to be part of WPA3. And then when they did come out with the official uh, statement or announcement of WPA3, it was left out. So the downside is this is not a requirement for any of, of the vendors to implement in their access points, for example. But what's great is Aruba Networks appears to be working on something so they could implement it in the near future of their access points. And uh, this is probably going to be rolled out in their 802.11 AC, maybe Wave 1 APs and, and, and newer. So we won't see this being updated to older APs, but this is still a really good step forward in in increasing security in our wireless networks, especially for our open SSIDs. And so I do want to get into reviewing uh, what I saw at Mobility Field Day 3, because as Chuck was doing this presentation, and just if you don't know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Mobility Field Day 3, I will include a link in the show notes. If you go to cleardescend.net slash 139, 139. You will see a link to the YouTube video, the exact uh, time when Chuck talks about this presentation and they go into the demo. And it's uh, a really neat demo because at Mobility Field Day 3, we're at Aruba Networks' um, uh, offices in, I think, Sunnyvale or Cupertino, somewhere in Silicon Valley. They had an, an one of their access points broadcasting an SSID that was OWE capable. Now, they had to build uh, a custom supplicant in Ubuntu because there are no clients yet that support OWE. So they did build a, a, a supplicant within Ubuntu in the Linux machine that is able to join this SSID. So like I said, one of the APs was broadcasting an OWE-capable SSID in transition mode. So if you're not familiar with OWE, there, there's two modes. You have your transition mode where the SSID is going to be 
broadcasting just a regular open SSID. This is what you're used to seeing now. There's no password for it, and you can just join after your authentication and association, your 802.11 open system. And then um, uh, in addition to that, in transition mode, there is the OWE-capable SSID. Now, this SSID has the requirements for it to be OWE, right? You PMF is required, your protected management frames. And if a client decides to uh, associate with this SSID and it is, uh, it is OWE capable, it will join the OWE capable SSID. And then I will go into that because what's interesting of how, how Aruba Networks is doing this configuration of, of OWE SSIDs. I don't know if this is going to be the same across all vendors, but this is how it appears to be from Aruba Networks themselves is that the AP is broadcasting the SSID and and what I'll actually do is share the packet capture that I have, the PCAP file in the show notes so you guys can take a look at this. But the SSID that Aruba Networks was broadcasting is called MFD-OWE. And that is an SSID that you see. It's on channel 116, I believe. I don't have the PCAP in front of me, but it was an 80 megahertz channel. What's interesting is that the actual SSID for the OWE capable network is a hidden SSID. So what you get here is in transition mode, you have two S, uh, two BSS IDs, one for your open SSID and a separate BSS ID for your OWE SSID. So that's the first mode, that's transition mode. The second mode is just a pure OWE capable SSID. So when once we have more clients that are OWE capable, they have the the right drivers and configurations. Uh, who knows how long this is going to take, right? Once we have all those clients that support it, then we will be able to use just strictly an OWE SSID. So I, I, this is going to take many years for for clients to keep up especially with all the terrible clients that we have out there that are iot capable for example because nobody updates those drivers then who knows if they will be able to support owe but let's assume that they are they they can be updated to support owe then once all these clients are, are we have OW mainstream, we can get rid of the transition mode and just start deploying SSIDs that are just OWE. So we have this, this SSID MFD-OWE. So if you're looking at the PCAP file, it's in the show notes. You can download that. What's really interesting here is the SSID or I mean the the beacon frame. If you look for the beacon frame. Hopefully you got your your filters set. We we do have an episode where we talk about the Wireshark filters. You can actually download that. I'll also link out to that in the show notes because you will want to use filters to to narrow down what you have visible as far as what's showing for the frames. But look at the the beacon frame, and there's going to be an information element that contains the BSS ID for clients to join the OWE capable SSID. And what I found was that Wireshark is still not yet updated to show all those details. It's gonna be an information element, a Wi-Fi Alliance information element, and you will see the, it'll say OWE and the BSS ID of that, that SSID to join and also the SSID name. Now, the way that Aruba Networks is do dealing with this SSID name is it's going to use this randomly generated SSID. And this is to ensure it is unique in the environment, just in case there are other OWE broadcasted SSIDs. Now, this may change in the future, but it's really interesting because, like I said, the, the OWE capable SSID is hidden. You do not see that SSID name. That SSID is 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 sent 
to the client as part of the authentication and I'll have to validate this. So let me pause real quick to bring up my, my PCAP. I should have done this before I recorded. Our show is brought to you by Audible. Did you know you can ask Alexa to read a book to you? I have an Alexa dot in my house and I had my favorite book being read to me, Ready Player One. It was really awesome because audio makes great audiobooks, whether you like to listen to books to get your mind somewhere else or whether you like to learn. Sometimes I like to read biographies. I've been an Audible listener for over a year and I absolutely love it for my commute. You will too because the selection on Audible is phenomenal. It seems like every book that comes out in print is also in Audible. So for you guys, you can go to audibletrial.com slash clear to send and you can get a book for free right now. Download it and start listening within a few seconds. So again, that's a free book for you guys. Download it at audibletrial.com slash clear to send. Okay, you probably didn't notice the pause there, but there... There is an information element that is vendor specific and it is Wi-Fi Alliance and the details show that it is an OWE transition mode. And that's important because that, like I said before, that there is two, there are two SSIDs, one for uh, open, just what we see now, and then your OWE capable. The type will be type 28, which means OWE transition mode. And then it'll include another uh, sub element there that's uh, our subfield for the BSSID and also the SSID name. And so I'll have some screenshots for you to see because Wireshark actually does not show you all those details. I do see the Wi-Fi Alliance vendor specific tag there and I'm using Wireshark version 2.6.3 on my Mac, but it does not show me the BSSID and SSID. So what I thought was really interesting is um, luckily I did capture um, using Wi-Fi Explorer Pro what uh, was being broadcasted in the area. And I and recently Adrian Granados updated Wi-Fi Explorer Pro to include OWE support. So that's version 2.1.1. And so I could include this in in the show notes as well so you guys can see this just do a filter for mfd-owe and then when you click on that ssid or that network name go to the advanced details and just like in wireshark when you see all those information elements scroll uh, go all the way down and you'll see that one of the information elements is vendor specific wi-fi alliance and that's where i saw all the information and this is information that is inside of the MFD OWE uh, beacon frame. And the beacon frame is what tells any OWE capable clients, hey, this is where you go join the OWE SSID. And so that is how a client actually decides or knows where to go, right? So then after that occurs, there will be a separate probe request from the client itself with that SSID and BSSID that is trying to join. So now if you go back to the PCAP file and do a filter just on that SSID, which you'll find uh, in the show notes that I have there, the there's a probe request from the client. Uh, it's a, a probe request to that SSID. Okay, so and then the access point will do the probe response. And what you want to look for here, because this is, uh, again, an open SSID, but using OWE, there is an RSN information element. And that is the key there, because now we're talking about it getting encrypted. It's going to do the uh, Diffie-Hellman exchange within two, uh, two frames, I believe. And within the RSN information element, look at the RSN capabilities, you will see that the management frame protection is required. It's going to say true. And it's going to say management frame protection enabled or capable, true. And so that is very important because if, if the client doesn't support that, it won't be able to join. It is a requ requirement for OWE. And then you'll see the association request frame from the client. It'll include the 
RSN information element also saying that it's going to support MFP or management frame protection. So the other big difference is after, uh, as we know, with, with 802.11 open system, you all you have is your authentication frames and then your association frames, and then you're on an open SSID. You're, you're connected. You can start transferring data after that. With an OWE SSID, you still go through the authentication and association, but then you have your four-way handshake. And that is the, the other key difference there is there is an, a four-way handshake involved. And you can also see that in the PCAP file. So I will include all that in the show notes so you can take a look. I'll include the MAC addresses that you could search for and narrow it down just to exactly what you should be seeing. It's, it's uh, very interesting to see this working in this demo environment. And I will say it's probably not in its final form. Aruba Networks is still working on it. But I thought having, uh, having had Aruba Networks show this to us, to show us that they want to be uh, a forerunner in Wi-Fi security, I think that's a big deal in this industry because uh, it, you're going to say there are no clients that support this yet. But I would like to see AP support this before clients come out. We want the, the, the vendors, the manufacturers who are making the clients to say, okay, how, how does OWE work? Let me build my client around how these APs are actually implementing it. And so we do need these AP vendors to come out with, with these supported. So that way we do have clients that work properly, right, with OWE. And this is a way for this technology to start getting out there. Once we have our Wi-Fi vendors supporting this, then we can see more of it supported by the client side. And I think that's why this is such uh, a big deal for me. I think this is great to see from Aruba Networks, and I really appreciate that they were able to do this and share it with us publicly and get it out there. And they were even telling us to do some packet captures and see how this was working. And, and so... That's all I have for this this overview or recap of what happened at Mobility Field Day 3 with Aruba Networks, specifically talking about their demo of OWE. Uh, by far, I thought that was one of the best demos I saw because it worked uh, pretty flawlessly. Uh, and just to recap of how OWE works, it's simply to provide some encryption of communications between the client and the AP, some confidentiality. And as you remember, back in the day, I think it was called Firesheep, you were able to join the same SSID and, and, and basically do some like cookie hijacking and, and be able to see um, you know, who, who was on the wireless network. And because it's all unencrypted, we were able to see everything. And, and we tried to rely on a lot of applications to secure those communications, but we should really do it at the communication level and just secure that communication between the client and the, the AP. And so with OWE, you do have uh, protected management frames that must be supported. That is a requirement, um, or in other words, uh, management protection frames. Uh, but in the, in, in the RFC, I think they call it PMF, protected management frames. And this is when um, it, it's now going to be a requirement for... OWE and both transition mode and also in just the pure OWE mode. And, and then the client and the AP go through a, a Diffie-Hellman exchange. I believe it's two frames, uh, according to Chuck, in the presentation. And then remember, there is a four-way handshake, just as we see in like PSK networks and a to one x You see those that four-way handshake. Now we are going to see it in an open open network and an open SSID that's using OWE. It's going to be an 802.11 uh, OWE with a four-way handshake. Now, the things to consider here with, with SSID supporting OWE, there's no mutual authentication between the client and the AP. So that, that means it doesn't prevent any, so, any sort of uh, man-in-the-middle attack where someone can stage up a rogue AP and and start broadcasting the same SSID, you, you don't know that if that AP actually belongs to whoever's operating the infrastructure for that network. So it doesn't prevent things like that. 
Um, but still, I think this is a, a big step forward in Wi-Fi security. This is where we need to go in securing a lot of our a lot of our communications. And I want to thank Aruba Networks for providing this demo for us and allowing us to see how this works. So if if you guys enjoyed this episode, go head over to the show notes again. That's cleartosend.net slash 139, where I will include all the information that I have collected from Mobility Field Day 3. That includes the the PCAT file. I'll include some MAC addresses uh, for you guys to narrow down on what you need to look for and start looking through those information elements. And be sure to upgrade your Wi-Fi Explorer Pro to uh, the latest version, uh, version 2.1.1 at, at the very least, so you can actually see the OWE uh, information element. Uh, more specifically, for me, it's right now, as of this version, says Vendor Specific Wi-Fi Alliance, and you'll see the OWE transition mode. So there you have it. That is our episode for this week. Kept it a little short, but I thought it was a lot of good detail, especially head, if you head over to the show notes for all the, the information and the files. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave some comments in the show notes or reach us out on Twitter at clear to send. I want to thank you guys for listening. And if you find this uh, very helpful, please go ahead and share it out with your, your colleagues, your friends on, and on Twitter. Thank you guys. And I will see you on the next episode.